Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative Wimp Studio. Hey everyone, I'm on location in Tennessee. After market, I'm staying with my, my soul sister, Kristen, the one that I do Witch Paint Wednesdays with. And I just wanted to do a market update, or not, or a market review, I guess it would be called. Uh, I'll kind of start from the beginning. I'm going to be inserting, this is gonna probably be really choppy because I wanna, add in all the video I took while I was there and then I also I want to do a sketchbook flip through because I don't have any works in progress to show you and so I'm gonna be kind of all over the place but I will do my best to keep it orderly so we left on Wednesday in Big Sexy so we rented a cargo van and it's huge so and it's ugly so I was calling it Big Sexy and we had more than enough room to take everything and there's just no way we could have took a minivan. So it worked. we're afraid it would be an uncomfortable ride. It was, I liked it. It was very roomy. There were cup holders everywhere, which I think is a big deal. And just the chairs were comfortable. Uh, on the way down there, Kevin drove the entire way and I took that time to add up the pre-orders. So I took pre-orders and I had a ton of emails for orders and I wanted to write them on the, in, on the invoices and total them. So then when we got there, my husband and Kristen pulled all the pre-orders and got them all packaged up and put them in alphabetical order on the bed and while I set up the display. Um, anyways, it, that was such a huge job. I had no idea I would get that many pre-orders and it took me about six hours on the way down there to rewrite the orders and total them because I would total them a couple times to make sure I didn't mess up and anyways six hours you guys so that trip went like that I mean I got done and we were like three hours away and I said are you kidding me I had no idea that <laughs> I was taking that long to do that so that was kind of our system and it worked really well we normally on Friday so we set up Thursday and normally on Friday we would go downtown Nashville and hang out and then open it from 6 to 9 on Friday. That didn't happen. We ended up stuffing patterns all day on Friday. We took, because you know, there gets to a point where it's like, okay, we have to load the van. We have no more time to make any more patterns. So we're like, just let's take everything with us in case we need it. Thank God we did. Because once we filled the pre-orders, we were really low on inventory. I don't know if I miscalculated or what, Anywho, we spent all day Friday uh, just stuffing orders. And then we opened six to nine, and I thought <laughs> my room was packed with people. It was from six to nine. There was no time to breathe. I mean, it was just order after order. You know, all three of us were pulling orders, and it was, it was incredible. So then uh, Saturday, when the show opened, nine to six, Saturday was also a zoo. We would have, you know, some slow moments, which thank God, because, you know, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., if it was nonstop, you know, that would be a little too much. But it, you know, we'd have a little bit of a lull, but then it was weird, like all of a sudden the room was full again. <laughs> you're running around and you're pulling orders. And uh, there was, a, you know, I kept thinking, with all these pre-orders, I kept thinking, I can't imagine that I'm gonna get many people walking in and just, pulling the order for them when they come in because I thought this has to be all my customers. I mean, the stack of papers was huge. No, that's not the case. I still had people coming in and, you know, we would pull orders for them. So we sold out of Newcastle Bouquet early Saturday morning. Newcastle was the shining star and the book, the Celebrate book also sold out Saturday morning. Two printings, y'all, 
Remember when I first got, I printed the first 400 and I'm like, oh, I hope I don't get stuck with these. Not a chance. Matter of fact, today I'm ordering more. So that was Saturday. Uh, and then Sunday was extremely slow. Last year on Sunday, we were kind of busy still. So I waited around in the room until like one o'clock before I went out and did my, you know, visiting and looking at linen and floss and all of that because I was afraid it would be busy and I didn't want to, you know, leave those guys hanging. So anyways, it was really slow. So I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I went around and visited. I did a little bit of recording in some of the rooms. I didn't get to as many as I did last year. And I'll tell you why. Because as you become friends with other designers and, you know, people that make the linen and stuff, you want to visit with them. So when I went down, I was gone like 45 minutes and it was down visiting Elizabeth with Dames of the Needle. And I come back in the room and they're like, well, how did it go? And I'm like, oh, I was just down two doors with, I've only seen one person. So, <laughs> so that's how that went. And it was wonderful. Uh, I think next year on Sunday, I'm just, when it opens at nine, I'm just going to leave the room and be gone the whole day so that I can see more people. I missed going into um, many, many of my favorite designers, Beth Twist, Hands On Design I didn't go into. I didn't see Brenda G. I did, there was a lot of people that I didn't even get a chance to go and see because the first thing I want to do was go look at linen and floss because, you know, that's, my, and, and trims because that's what I need to place orders and all of that. And then I wanted to go and see all the designers and film in their rooms. Ink circles, I didn't make it in, I mean, I talked to her in the hallway, but I didn't make it in her, to her room. Um, Bendy Stitchy, I was so bummed that I didn't get to record because she was new this year and I wanted to record her room. But I did pop my head in there when they were, you know, taking their things down. And I just said, I give her a big hug. And I said, I just wanted to say, you know, hi and everything. And so it was just, it was an amazing show and I have lots of notes on what we're going to do differently next year. But uh, everyone I talked to said it was their best show ever and it was the same for me. So much gratitude. I mean, we were just all blown away. <laughs> all of us. So thank you for all of you for your support and placing pre-orders with your shops and it just makes everyone uh, know what to buy and so that everyone can get what they want. So that's awesome. What else do I want to talk about with market? Um, there were a lot of new designers there. There were, I think, God, what was the count? So I was in a little meeting Friday at noon. So that at noon they had one meeting was for the wholesalers, for the vendors, and then another meeting is like a Q&A. And then the other Q&A was for the retailers, for the shops. And I was on the panel with three other people. Uh, two were shop owners and one was Stephanie Webb from Lindy Stitches. And I learned so much being on the panel for that meeting. I mean, even if I was just in the room for the meeting, I didn't really contribute a whole lot because it was geared towards stores. But I learned a lot about how I will handle my pre-orders and different things like that. Uh, where was I going with that? I forget where I was going with that. I'm going to watch this back when I edit and I'm going to say, oh, you never finished your thought, Teresa. <laughs> Anyways, it was great. And I am at my friend's, Kristen's house, and I'm staying here for the week. Her daughter is getting married in May, and this coming weekend is the bachelorette party, and she has rented a house in Gatlinburg, like a cabin in the woods, and we're just going to go and have fun girl time. And, you know, I considered going home right after market because I knew I would have orders to fill and that. But, you know, I've been working ridiculous hours since January, and... I just need some downtime and so does my husband. My husband has a full-time job and then he comes home and he cuts covers and he stuffs patterns and it's just, we both need the break. So we were telling stores it would be two weeks before they would get their, you know, whatever we were out of. So 
I guess that's kind of it for market. I don't know really what else to talk about for that, but I will insert what I do have or what I did record. Oh, and I did a little interview with Teresa Vanette. I love her. You know, I felt like I knew her already because of, you know, the floss tube and, you know, uh, we have little short chit chats uh, back and forth when she emails an order or something, but I had never met her, like other than passing in the hallway. And I got to, she came into the room to uh, do a little interview and she stayed a little bit and visited with Kevin and I, and she is just as delightful as she is on her videos. And I really enjoy meeting her. Oh, meeting Vanna and Gary, oh my gosh. The work that the two of them do for this industry is amazing. And if you don't watch Fiber Talk, you need to go right now. No, after this video, <laughs> go check out Fiber Talk. They did a lot of interviews with artists and de or designers at the show. They uh, took patterns, you know, new release patterns from folks and were showing it and talking about them. It was, it's such a uh, great contribution to this this industry and uh, we're very thankful for them. So I got to meet them finally and that was amazing. Uh, I got to meet Lisa B. the Pumpkin Lady and her wonderful husband. Uh, I got to meet Jordan and Jamie. They were the first people I saw. So a Little Stitch Girl, that was her first show. My understanding is she found out a month before market that she got into the market. How she got ready in a month is amazing to me. And her booth was adorable and she was just right down from me. So I got to see her a lot. And when we first got there Wednesday night, I walk into you know, get my room key and everything. And they were the first people that I saw. And it was neat. We had a nice little chit chat then. and just so much fun it's just so much fun and I that was my first time meeting Stephanie Webb and Beth Twist and <clears throat> um, just a blast so I'm gonna stop you know gushing about Nashville and just let you watch some videos here okay however before I go I just have to say some huge huge thank yous ah <sighs> Okay, I couldn't have done any of this without my amazing husband. He is my biggest fan, my biggest supporter, and I love him so much. And he has always supported me in everything I've wanted to do. Why am I getting so emotional? Probably because he's not here and I won't see him all week. <laughs> but anyways, he has, my whole entire career, he has always supported me in everything that I do. He's way more hands-on now with this part of my business. Well, I shouldn't say that actually. When we had Primitive Folk, he was very hands-on there too. He did all the finishing of the frames and all that. But he works so hard to help this business be a success. So I love you, Kevin, so much and I thank you for all your help. I want to give a big thank you to Kyle and Ryan. They, our sons, were amazing and we employed them to help stuff patterns and I mean <laughs> Ryan spent six hours one day doing nothing but sitting on his couch stuffing patterns and his room his, his roommate's name is Kyle too and his roommate is like yeah he did he sat there six hours and stuffed patterns <laughs> so we couldn't have had all of that inventory without their help so I want to thank them and then my amazing friend Kristen I'm telling you she's a workhorse and she came in and helped us with she was there every morning before market started she helped us set up she did the pre-order pulling uh, she helped when we got busy which you know friday and saturday just kevin and i could not have done it ourselves so having that third person there helping us and she's just the sweetest person and everyone kept saying are you two sisters or they would come in if i wasn't in the booth they would come in and they would talk to her like she was teresa she goes oh i'm not teresa or you know it's pretty funny we've gotten that all through our friendship that people think we're sisters but I, we always say no we're just soul sisters which i think are the best kind of sisters so anyway i just wanted to add that on before showing you some of the videos We are not bringing everything. I can remember I would like almost be in tears when we would get to Nashville and I didn't, like I forgot a box that had maybe 25 of my models in it. And I'd panic. <sighs> I'm not bringing anything but like my top sellers, 
my new releases from the past you know year all of my work of heart series like all the angels you know there's just there's not room anymore for everything and it just takes a lot of time to set up that way i mean i always wanted to kind of be a showcase so people could come in and see the body of work and all the different styles and all that but it's just not practical anymore so uh it will actually make it a lot easier on us for setup and for packing the view what the heck is that i'm doing this on snapchat by the way so <laughs> um Oh my gosh, I can't quit laughing at this. So I know a lot of people, I got so many people messaging me and texting me this morning because of the horrific tornado that went through Nashville and people lost their lives and it was, it was devastating. And it's so sad and I'm just, my heart goes out to the families. But people were contacting me to, you know, see if everything was okay. We hadn't even... You know, that happened Tuesday night and or Monday night, and um, we aren't leaving until tomorrow morning, which is Wednesday. But the storm went like Nashville and above, and the show is actually 15 minutes south of Nashville. And then my friend Kristen is another 15 minutes south. We're Nashville bound, just getting on the road. Look out, here we come. 9 30 ish. There's all the patterns. No way a minivan would have held all that. Wish us safe travels. Catch you later. We're on our way. There's my DD. <laughs> Arrival time into Nashville is around 6. That depends too on how much we stop. It might be closer to seven. We'll see you later. Happy Thursday morning. So I just want to give you a little glimpse of the beginnings. So here's the door. So let's turn around so that you can see as you walk in the room. This is how it looks before. This is the living room area. This will be set up with our little shop. This couch, I don't know if it was two or three years ago, they changed the furniture in here. And look at this couch with this like chase, chase lounge or whatever on the end makes it a real bear to move. <laughs> Our display covers all the walls anyways, so no worries there. So we got here last night at about seven o'clock, I think it was, or six o'clock, 6.30, something like that. And we just unloaded um, Kristen and her daughter Gabby and Gabby's fiance JT showed up and helped us get all the patterns and all the models into the room, and then the display is still out in the van. Big sexy, still out there. So here is a load of patterns. I wanted to show you guys real quick. I had shirts made, create every day with a little needle and some little cross stitches. And then on the back, ooh, sorry about that. And then on the back with my long hair, it will cover it, but Teresa Kogut created ones on YouTube. Yay! So we have shirts this year. That was fun. More patterns, more patterns, more patterns. Again, more patterns, more patterns. Those in the corner are the books. Not all of them, but those are the books. Um, I did have to do a second printing of the books and they arrived. I was really shaken in my boots, but they arrived Tuesday. No. Yeah, Tuesday, like right as we were packing the van. So they arrived just in the nick of time. <laughs> you guys, this is all patterns. Patterns. Some yet to be stuffed. 
As you can see, there's covers and bags in that one. Yeah, we're going to be stuffing patterns even while we're here. This is a funny story. So these are actually pre-orders that we started bagging up. That box and then this box. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, was it Tuesday? Yeah, I think it was Tuesday. I said, okay, let's start pulling all the pre-orders. And we started pulling the pre-orders. And look at, this is only like four or five orders in here. But the orders are so big like this is one order two I mean that it's it's insane so there's no way we could have pulled all those orders and then had them in boxes they would have got crushed I didn't have the right size boxes for all this so we decided just to bring because when you have the patterns you know just in boxes like this it's way easier so we just decided to bring all the patterns and then while we're setting up the booth, Kristen will be here pulling the pre-orders. So my chore this morning is to get everything in numerical order so that Brianna can, or Brianna, Brianna, she just texted me and her name come up here. <laughs> but so um, Kristen can pull the pre-orders while we're setting up the booth. Look at, we've never brought this much stuff before. It's insane. I brought way less models but I bought, brought way more patterns. Bed to sleep, bed to store. <laughs> so anyways, we have our work cut out for us. Kevin went down to get some coffee, probably have a little breakfast. I told him I'm skipping breakfast today and just waiting for lunch. So there you go. I can't wait to show you when we get it all done. Who has the best husband in the entire world? This girl, this girl right here. My wonderful husband says, I'm gonna go down and get us some coffee. By the way, we're at the Nashville market. We're setting up today. What does he do? He goes, he gets into the Big Sexy, which is our cargo van. That's what I'm calling our cargo van, <laughs> Big Sexy. He gets our cups out of the car, out of the van, rinses them out with coffee. You think that'll do it? I'll have that booth set up in no time. I finally have a window display that I can be proud of. I made big posters. There's such a glare, it's hard to see. But at the top it says, Teresa Kovitz, and then it's got, show some samplers. It is Friday morning, and I'm so happy that I have a Snapchat filter on because I have no makeup on and I haven't even combed my hair. <laughs> but I just want to do a little update. Um, as you can see, I'm standing in front of my booth. It's really washed out with this filter on, but I just wanted to do a little update. Um, we got the booth completely done. Kevin and Kristen worked on all pulling all the pre-orders. So that part's done. We ran out of stuff. So today, I wanted, the goal today was to have everything done and like at noon I'm on a panel, a Q&A panel. But after that was done, I wanted to go downtown Nashville and spend the afternoon because we don't open tonight till 6 p.m. But instead, we're in our room all day stuffing more charts. So this will be the first year we've been to Nashville and not made it downtown. I'm super sad about it. Super sad, but it is what it is. We're here to fulfill all the orders and all the needs of our customers, and that's what's important. So Nashville, I have to wait. We are coming back in May for Gabby's wedding, so maybe we'll stay a couple extra days and hit downtown. Anyways, that's the market update for this morning.
not going to be our typical way we do way I do <laughs> my floss tubes because I'm not going to do q and A. I'm not going to do the Chinese fortune teller, all those things that I normally do because I have a lot already, a lot of content. I'm not going to do a giveaway because I'm not home. So next week when I get back into my studio and things are a little bit more normal, we will do all those fun things. But I do want to do a little oopsie that I did. Okay, I was looking at the Fabulous Monsters. <clears throat> Somebody asked me what fabric that was stitched on and I couldn't think of the name of it. So I pulled the pattern at market and I'm looking at the back of it and it says Weeks Dye Works 32 Count Corn Silk. And I'm like, that's not what that is. I know it's not. I know it's 32 count. I know it's Dames of the Needle, but I can't, you know. So <laughs> I had to pull all of those charts and hand write in Dames of the Needle and it's Witch's Brew because somebody was in there at the time and they're, they're like, that looks like Witch's Brew. And I'm like, that's it. So if you happen to have Cross Stitch 218 Fabulous Monsters, I released it in January. I have the wrong, I have the wrong linen listed. So please make sure that if you want it to look like it does on the cover, you're going to want to get Dames of the Needle, which is brew. So I have a few announcements. Uh, a lot of people are asking when will I have my new patterns in the book available on my Etsy shop. When I get back on the 16th, I will be working that entire week to ship the things that I didn't have to fill orders in Nashville. So that's going to take me all week to get that done. So the following week, which would be the week I think of the 23rd, March 23rd, somewhere in there, during that week at some point I will have everything listed on Etsy and I will do an announcement, you know, post on Instagram and uh, Facebook and just let everyone know because I know a lot of you don't have an LNS and so that will happen that week and <laughs> this is kind of funny. I have a plane ticket to fly home Monday the 16th. I decided I'm going to drive. They are saying that if you don't have to fly, then don't because of the coronavirus. And although I'm not afraid of the coronavirus, let me just get that straight right now. I'm not. But I Okay, so the, my our priest, he did a lot of research to find out the facts about the coronavirus so that people in the parish weren't freaking out. And he said this, that a lot there will be a lot of people that have it and don't even know they have it. But, but by not knowing you have it, you're spreading it to other people. That's why, and it's easily contagious because just like he said with a regular flu, you have to cough and then the virus can spread that way where this just by breathing it can drop in someone's eye you know so don't touch your face they're saying stay three feet away from one another and you know on a plane you're like all oh. uh and then the people that do come down with it it might feel like a cold it might be you know a flu and then some people will get really sick but the percentage of people getting really sick is small compared to the amount of people that will actually have it. Does that make sense? Anyways, my, my thing is I watched my grandbabies and if I were to get it and not know I had it and I had those babies over and they got sick, I would never forgive myself. So I'm doing everything possible to not get it. So, you know, I wash my hands three million times during market because you know you're handling money people are in and out they're signing my phone you know for the credit card thing washed my hands a million times didn't touch my face we had thieves uh, in the diffuser and that was going all day during market uh, I mean we took every precaution I'm I've always been take a vitamin taker anyways but I'm definitely taking my vitamins you know just eating healthy and just just keep your immune system strong. And um, anyways, so I decided I'm driving home Monday. It's only nine hours. I've drove 11 hours before by myself and it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna run a vehicle and I'm driving home on Monday just to avoid. Well, you know, the nine hours in the car, it, it would take probably more than nine hours flying just because I have a four hour layover. 
So, and then my friend Kristen, I didn't know this, but she was saying that they're taking everyone's temperature before they get on the plane. So you have to get to the airport extremely early to get through all of the security and all of that BS. And I don't want to deal with it. And I hate having a four hour layover just sitting around. And last time I was here and I flew home, my flight was canceled and I spent eight hours at the airport waiting for the next flight. And it's just like, you know, I'd rather be in the car and moving whew, straight shot north up home. <laughs> so I'm driving. Okay. So tomorrow is Wednesday and Kristen and I are going to do what you paint Wednesday. What we're painting, your guess is as good as mine. We need to decide that today. <laughs> so we will be here in her studio. That's where I'm at right now. This is where she does all her amazing furniture painting. And I'm going to ask her if she'll, I would love to do a home tour. You guys should see her house. She she just redecorated, I don't know, was it a, uh, within the past year because it wasn't like this when I was here last year. And it's all farmhouse and all of the chippy paint, which I love and adore. So her house is spectacular and I would love to share that with you. I digress. Uh, so anyways, we're going to paint something, I don't know what, tomorrow night at, well, I'm here in Tennessee, so it's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No. Central time, I'm sorry, <laughs> 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay, and then what else? Okay, so in April-ish, it might be May, I'm starting my Creative Whims Live painting course where it's a membership and I will be painting live every other week and then alternating uh, each week with a live Q&A. So basically every Tuesday I will go live, but one week I'll paint, the next week is a Q&A, and the Q&A can be about that painting lesson if you have questions or issues about it, and or just if you want to learn about business or, you know, ask away. So that's going to start hopefully in April, if not the 1st of May. And that will be through Facebook, and it will be a private group. So that's starting soon. And then, uh, you know, I wanted to do that live Q&A with Kevin on our travels to Nashville. It didn't work out. I bought these things that suction cup to the window or the dashboard. Well, we had a cargo van and it was real bouncy. And I was watching because he had his on the window to watch for the maps, you know. And I'm watching it and it's going like this. And I'm like, there's no way. And he goes, well, you could hold it. I said, It'll probably take us an hour to do this q and A. I'm not gonna have my arm out there trying to hold it. And not to mention, that's still gonna be jiggly, wiggly. So we decided to wait until we're both back home and we'll probably in the house, and rather than in the studio, just for a change of scenery, we will do the live Q&A then. So look forward to that. That'll be fun. And then uh, I just wanted to kind of go over, because a lot of people were saying, well, what, you know, what did you learn about market that you'll change for next year and the biggest thing i'm going to say i'm not having a january release this year was my first time having a release in january and it took my focus off nashville it basically consumed all of january just getting through that release then i started working on nashville that's not enough time not to mention i didn't have enough punch needle to release at market. I only came out with four and I normally have nine. So the ones that I released in January would have been for Nashville. So I'm not doing that to myself again. I am going to start preparing for market now, actually. I want to have, I'm gonna start a list of what I plan on doing for samplers, for everything. Uh, 14 to 15 releases for cross stitch is plenty and then I'd like to get back into doing you know eight or nine punch needle but I want to start planning it now and then as the models come in do the directions and get them printed and just store it and or not not store it but I mean work on it throughout the year and be prepared because I was so not prepared this year I am going to be printing, doing more of those books. Those books, everyone loved them. Yeah. I would like to come out with like a book, and I was thinking this already, and then Kristen's like, oh, you should do themed books, which is what I'm gonna do. Like have one that's all Halloween. 
one all Christmas, one all spring, one all ornaments. You know, wouldn't that be really cool? So the books were a big hit. We loved them because the, the quality of the paper is so nice and we don't have to bag it and all of that. It's just ready to go. And um, people love books, you know, and they'll be something, I think, especially when you have that many in one book, you know, between 12 and 15 designs, you know, it's something that you can hang on to and, and pass on down through your family or whatever, you know, it'll last longer than just, you know, the paper patterns. And what else? Oh yeah, print more and stuff more than you'll think you'll need. <laughs> That's definitely the underlying theme. All right, so I have one finish. It's not fully finished, but Karen, do you remember Good Tidings, the Santa and the snowman decorating the little feather tree in a snowy scene? And it was full coverage. Well, Karen, that she lives in Ohio, she stitched that. And she also stitched Bell's Nichols, that was a new release this year for Nashville. And she was working on another one for me. Well, she got it done and she surprised me at Nashville. She came to Nashville with Claire from Claire Stitching Post. And Claire is the one that introduced me to Karen, to Tina Penton, Matthew Penton, and they're amazing. They're all of them are amazing stitchers and Claire is stitching something for me as well. So anyways, Karen surprised me. I, first of all, I didn't even know she was coming and she happened to text me and say, Hey, I'm coming to market. I can't wait to see you again. And she brought the piece that she was working on. And I had this piece showing at market. I had it sitting there. I'm hoping this is in the screen. There we go. So I had that sitting out so that people could see it and I would put, you know, come, I had a little sign that says coming soon. Well, the problem is people were like, can we place pre-orders? Can we order that now? <laughs> I was like, I better put this away because it's too much of a tease. So anyways, what I love about this piece is all of those individual boxes that make the border, you could do those all as little ornaments. Look how small they are. Like, here's my hand. So you can see how tiny all of these stitched pieces are. And they could all be ornaments and then do the centerpiece as an ornament as well. So it's Santa and the reindeer exchanging gifts. But all oh, that border, I absolutely love it. That angel, I love it. So there you go. When is this going to be released? That's a good question. My next release is in June and then I'll have a fall release and then I won't have anything until Nashville. So I think June actually would be a good time because there's a lot of stitching in that and it would be give people time to get that finished for Christmas. So I'm going to say it's going to be a June release. Okay, y'all. That's it for now. I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a little sketchbook flip through because I know y'all love that. This sketchbook, there's still several pages left at the back of it, but um, what else? These were done, like this says salt and pepper. This was done for park designs. Ellery Erica Cagle, I was going to do this cute little box painting for her and I have not done that yet. Shame on me. I'm a bad grandma. This is for the uh, the teddy bear calendar. Not much going on on that page. As you can see, you probably recognize the snowman and the Santa here. These images here, let me see. Maybe this would be a better way to do it. They all seem to be sideways. These I have not painted, but I think they're so fun. There's so much going on in them, but they're all basically my whimsy chicks with a lot of stuff going on around them. Most of my whimsy chicks so far have just been kind of a plain background. So I was just experimenting with some fun things like that.
This one I think is so cute. <clears throat> She's got a little sheep, a little chihuahua with a crown on, a little dog in this hand, a bird, a cat on her head with a bird on the cat. Is that not adorable? Let me know if this is something you'd be interested in in cross stitch. I think it's super cute and I think it could be, these could be a lot of fun. And then this is a little bee girl. She's got a little beehive. There's bees all around her with some big flowers. And she's got a little hat on that has little antennas. A lot of these have dogs in them. <laughs> this little dog, it says woof. They're hard to see. When they were, or when they're painted, they would be much easier to make out the detail. But there's a bird, there's birds all over. Bird, 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 bird. And then the girl, she's kind of, she's holding a little birdhouse and she's holding this, these flowers. It's just super cute. And then this one is really fun and whimsical. She's holding a little kitty. She's holding a little dog. Look at this bird down here. Kind of looks like a chicken or a rooster. I don't know if you can hear it raining. So I'm in Kristen's studio and I love it here because the windows are right next to this desk that I'm at, this table that I'm at. And you can see the traffic, you can see people coming in and out of the driveway because her husband owns a business and then her son-in-law owns a business behind the house, way behind the house. So you can see people driving down the driveway, but it's raining really hard right now. But look at, there's a bird, a bird here, a bird here, butterfly, bird. I mean, there's another bird here, another bird here. Ah, I love these. This is Oh the Joy. And it's a funky little Santa Claus with, of course, funky birds. The, these birds remind me of like a Dr. Seuss style bird. And then this one. This little girl, she's falling asleep on the the uh, stem of the flower. There's a little girl peeking out from the flowers. Little girl here. This little girl's holding the raccoon with the funky birds. Oh, here's another little raccoon down here. I'm kind of into raccoons and birds and dogs. <laughs> here, this one's a little girl. Her, her skirt is supposed to be like flower petals. She's holding the cute little he looks like a Boston Terrier type dog. And then there's a little girl here, this little funky person with a top hat on, this little child. I don't know. I don't know what happens in my brain to come up with this weird stuff, but a funky bird there. Look at her. <laughs> I, I drew these so long ago, I kind of forgot about them. But look at her dress. This funky little dog, evidently I fell in love with this funky little dog because I put him in her dress, like the pattern on her dress is that little funky dog. And then I've got a bird on top of her head. And then this bird has a little top hat on. And then this little girl, <laughs> aren't they fun? Oh, here's, no, I thought that was the date. It is the date, 10, so October 1st of 2018 is when I sketched these sketches. This says Moonflower. This one, if I ever paint it or do cross stitch out of it, or even punch needle, these would be awesome as punch needle. Uh, Moonflower. Oh, I forgot to mention. I met, one of my biggest pleasures was meeting Liz Matthews and Kathy Barrick. I met Kathy a few years back, but we didn't have a chance really to talk. But Liz and I had some time together and oh, it, she's just such a wonderful person. But her mom, Kathy, did this punch needle that was huge. It was absolutely huge. These would be so cool as punch needle because it reminds me of what Kathy did. There's, because Kathy's has all these flowers and I think there was birds in it too, but it was really big and these would have to be big to get all the detail. They would take me forever, but I would like to do it. But anyways, talking about moon flowers, my mother-in-law grew moonflowers and so Kevin remembers that as a kid growing up and we've tried twice now to grow moonflowers and no success but <laughs> we're gonna keep trying kind of like hydrangeas my grandmother had a beautiful hydrangea and I have tried to tr grow them as an adult ever since we've had our house and I've just not never had any luck with it but we'll get there so anyway she's just kind of dancing this little girl's 
jumping in the air and this is the moon and then moon flowers so it would be white flowers and probably a black background or a dark dark blue background for this would be awesome and then a little boy y'all i never have little boys in my art or anything so this is a unique one there's a little boy and a little girl and they're just kind of playing in the flowers and the balloons there's some balloons and it says be happy and there's funky birds all over this cute little cat this little dog with a top hat on i don't know you know i did top hat sheep a few years back and so now the top hat's going on dogs and cats too and birds here's one it says dance like it's your last it should say dance like no one's watching, but I don't like the whole dance like it's your last. But anyway, that's coming out of a bird's mouth. Look at this bird. He's got like polka dots and stuff on. This little cat is holding a strand of hearts. Another little boy, guys. And um, a little dog dancing on top of the house. This little girl's doing like a pirouette. And this little girl with all the funky flowers. And I love this little row of flowers in the background with that house this one is like a little farm girl she's holding the sheep like she's a little shepherd lady she's got a couple of sheep she's got a cow the cow looks like he's running or jumping through the cornfield excuse me cornfield there's the barn this little girl is standing on top of the cow's back and I love this. This little bird is on her leg, and they're going so fast that the, that the um, feathers are flying off the little bird. I think that's so cute. That one says 10-7 uh, of 2018. Then we just have some birds. Y'all might recognize this guy. Fox and Friend. He has now been done in Punch Needle and Cross Stitch. I've painted, I painted this one. I've not painted this turkey or done anything with him yet, but I think he's super cool. Here with the deer and the cute little bunny hiding in the foliage. Then this one here. Uh, this one actually has been stitched and will probably be released in June as well but basically it's a mirror image so the the deer is on this side as well and then this cute little snowman here with the holly berries around him this was just one day I just wanted to draw snowmen so there's just an all-over design of snowmen you'll recognize this has been done on punch needle I know it would be great cross stitch too, eventually. <laughs> and then this one I think is really pretty. I think, I, yeah, I've painted this one in watercolor. It turned out really pretty. I was just reading my notes. It says Forest Angel Series. I don't know, owls and angels, angels in the night. I don't know. But this one uh, you recognize as a punch needle. These were the sketches of those angels that I painted that commission those commission paintings that were ginormous those were my sketches for that it says cross stitch take my art and piece it with sayings for for example I don't really know what I had envisioned there but I don't know it's got a house in it with a big tree and there's going to be a saying here it says motifs more art and then alphabet I'm not sure what that was all about this has been done in punch needle here's just some cute little snowmen and things that I'm not sure why I have them there but I do <laughs> actually no it was this one not this one this is the one that I did in Punch Needle. And then these cute little farm animals, 
gardening. It's called Garden Party. And I did these for Blossom Bucket. I love that. The little sheep with the bee skep on its back. And it says zinnia. Zinnias? Like she's watering those zinnias. Oh my god, this one is so cute. These would be really cute cross stitch. And then we have more sketches for uh, my teddy bear calendar. This is actually for the 2021 calendar. These are all the sketches for the 2021 calendar. I'm going to use very muted colors, like it's faded. It would be really pretty as cross stitch too, but I think I'll start out doing it as punch needle. And then here's the ornaments that I released in January, punch needle. This should have been released at market. Or some fun, some fun witch ones. I love this with the moon, the moon having the witch hat on. She's weird and funky with all these little cats underneath. And then this one, it says busy being cute, this little snowman. There's a story behind that. When Kyle was little, he was, we would like in the morning lay in bed and he would come in there and, and we had a water bed at the time. And so he would come and walk on the water bed and, and just entertain us. We would just, he would keep us in stitches. But uh, this one day I said, I said, um, why don't you come here and um, lay down with us? And just because we were kind of tired, why don't you just come lay down with us? And he's like, no, I'm busy being cute. <laughs> so that's that's for you, Kyle. <laughs> so here's the star ornaments. Okay, I have a star-shaped snowman. And as you know, Vana finished it for me. And then she put the finishing instructions in Punch Needle Primitive Stitchers Magazine. Well, I'm going to be doing a series of it. So here is the series. One that says December 25th. We got a cool looking Santa. Feather tree. This one says Jesus is the reason. This one says Christmas and it's going to have a funky little deer and a funky little Santa. This one says Joy where the, where the O is a snowman. An angel. Season of giving. And then here I just wrote down the rest of what I want to do. So this series is going to be a total of like 25 ornaments for your tree and that's it the rest is all blank so i hope you enjoyed that flip through i i need to get back to sketching i have not done sketching in a very long time so i hope you enjoyed this little bit different format of my floss tube and we will get back to next week uh being a little bit more organized but yet i think i want to do i want to mix it up a little bit Beautiful. I'm just waiting for it to go by. So I want to mix it up a little bit. I want to try to add in some like daily vlogging and just do some daily video taping. I it, I might not be real good at it to, to start with because I don't think about it. I just wait and save everything for floss tube. But I think it would be more interesting and a little bit more fun if I kind of go through the week and talk about things. So. We'll see how that goes. I will give it an attempt and you guys can let me know if you like it or not. So anyways, I'm going to let you go now. Thank you everyone for being here and we'll see you next week. Don't forget, create every day. Bye.